and I'll go straight into my presentation. This call is now being recorded. So I hope that you can all see my screen. Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Thank you, yes, sir. sir. So uh, today my uh, presentation is on yoga research, the past, present, and future. And when I begin this, I would like to invoke the great masters of the past on whose shoulders we are building all of this modern knowledge, wisdom, and so I invoke the great rishis of the past. Om Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Shavirasya Chavaitya Kena Yoba Karotam Kravaram Muninam Padanjalim Franjalirana Tosmi Om Tat Param Paryaya Vidmahe Jnana Lingeshvaraya Dhimahe Tanno Guru Prachodayate Om Om Yoga Mahesh Dr. Swami Gita Ananda Ke Guru Maharaj Ke Jai So today I am representing the Sri Balaji Vidya Peet, one of the top 100 deemed universities with A grade in India. And the Center for Yoga Therapy Research that has been functioning here, CITER, since 2010. Our focus is salutogenesis, moving from pathogenesis, a focus on disease, towards salutogenesis, the focus on health. And our efforts over the past decade have been to truly make our healthcare system a healthcare and not a disease care system. I would like to offer my salutations to my yoga research mentor, Professor Madan Mohan sir, who was originally slated to give this talk. Sir has been a pioneer in the integration of yoga in modern medicine, be it at Chipma, Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, through CITER and now the Center for Yogic Sciences and AVMC. You can see that in 1982 itself, he put out a path-making publication on oxygen consumption and ventilatory changes during Savitri Pranayama and Shavasan, along with my esteemed father and Guru Swami He continued this work and I was privileged to serve with him in what we call the OM team, the OM team of Ananda, Udupa and Madan Mohan that did a lot of work right in the early 2000s. The origin of research in yoga dates back to the prehistoric origin of yoga itself because our ancient rishis were truly searching and researching for the answer to the all important question, ko hum nan ya, who am I? The scientific and philosophical literary research is essential today to confirm validate and enhance the understanding and application of the yogic concepts and practices for the benefit of humanity. A couple of days back, I did a PubMed search, the gold standard of research as we know, and the term yoga therapy brought up 6,205 results of gold standard research in PubMed indexed journals. Where did this start? Well, modern yoga research Swami Kovalayananda, 100 years ago at Kaivalya Dhamma, that is soon celebrating its centenary year. And the amazing work published in Yoga Mimamsa, the first scientific journal in yoga. And the work by M.L. Gharote, M.B. Bole, P.B. Karambelkar, and S.L. Binekar that set the path to how we can scientifically understand yoga. Then this was taken up by medical scientists. B.K. Anand, Chinna, G.S., K.N. Urupa, K.S. Gopal, R.L. Vijlani, and Madan Mohan sir at eminent institutions like AIMS, BHU, Nimhans, and Jitma. Today, the yoga universities such as S.P.A.S.A. in Bangalore and Patanjali Yoga Peach in Haridwar are taking the message forward. 
However, the research has been mainly limited to the physical aspects, and most researchers today seem to be more interested in proving themselves rather than in really researching yoga as a whole. We must remember that yoga in the box. We often put yoga in the box to fit our randomized, double-blind clinical trial methodology, and so yoga is put in a box. Well, yoga in a box is not really yoga. If you take the example of Shavasana, the yogic relaxation, most yogic phenomena are beyond the mere physical manifestation. So, if we conclude Shavasana has only the physiological effect of lowering blood pressure and heart rate, well, we are only seeing the tip of the iceberg, missing more than 90 percent. The real effects of Shavasana as an ultimate relaxation, a true renunciation. May have more far-reaching effects than we would have been led to believe. In recent times, yoga research is a global phenomenon. There are more blinded, randomized, and controlled trials. There is better planning and implementation, a better understanding of mechanisms by which these practices may cause the effect. There are more number of research studies published in index journals with peer review, a better standard of research. At least at the physical level, but still, what is happening? We need to go forward, and for that, we need funding that is slowly starting to come. The questions I would like to put at this time is: Do we have the equipment to quantitatively and qualitatively measure the effects of yoga? What are we to do in most aspects of yoga that seem to be beyond our present-day capacity? And as a yoga practitioner, my question is: How do we keep the yoga in yoga research? And then, how can we enable the knowledge gained to percolate down into clinical practice in yoga education? The transnational aspect of yoga research is a big question because yoga research is not just gathering information on yoga; it is not just the rearranging of known facts on yoga. It must be continual. It must be expanding, because otherwise we just keep on repeating ad nauseum the earlier work, and it must not be a sales pitch. A lot of research today is done by people just to sell either the institution or their tradition or their techniques. We have to be very careful of this. True research is a quest driven by a specific question. Which needs an answer, leading to a new question. But what we are doing today, we want to find some yoga practice to cure disease, and then publicize our technique. Basic research in yoga is lacking. Why? Not as attractive, and again, you don't get much publicity. And the biggest issue: most researchers lack the experience of yoga. They are not living yoga, so they have no clue about what you are researching. This is a big difference in yoga research. You must be understanding what yoga is. The need of the hour. We need to focus on the core concept of yoga, and we need extensive basic research. To me, a lot of research looks like pharmaceutical companies trying to find wonder drugs for newer diseases, and everybody wants a single yoga pill for each ill. Can we find one asana for diabetes, one pranayama for hypertension? Well, yoga doesn't work that way. There have been comprehensive analysis done by Sadhvir Kalsa and others, showing threefold increase in number of publications recently. Forty-five percent RCTs. And what are the main disorders? Mental health disorders, cardiovascular disease, and respiratory disease. These are the prime areas of focus that have come up in recent times. But I must remind you. It doesn't matter how many resources you have, if you don't know how to use it, there will never be enough. And look at this guy; he has all these ladders, but he cannot reach his goal of going beyond that wall. And I think this is happening today. We need to really have a very, very clear understanding of what resources we have. So I did a study in 2016 and did a survey on the utilization of yoga research resources by yoga teachers. And there was a general lack of awareness. 
the practicing yoga teachers and therapists were not reading the research papers and they said yes yes it is important you should know research but you know what they were getting it off newspapers off google off wikipedia not from the actual sources now the key players in this whole equation the student the therapist the patient the researcher and the teacher all have to work together then only will yoga research really really start to do the job it should do because yoga therapy works at three levels the body the mind and the spirit at the body level restoring function and creating healing at the mind creating healing and reducing suffering and at the spirit reducing suffering and creating community and again whenever i have doubt go to the best person sadhya kalsa who has given a beautiful schematic how the yoga practices the postures the breathing the relaxation and meditation enable four domains to be improved fitness domain self regulation domain the awareness domain and the spirituality domain and through these enhancements the global human functionality itself is enhanced this is the comprehensive panoramic view of yoga and yoga research that we need to take into mind some beautiful mechanisms that have come up by inus and others one pathway the reduced activation and reactivity of the sympathetic adrenal system and the hpa axis the second pathway vagal stimulation and parasympathetic function enhancement and pathways 3 and 4 selective activation of specific brain structures and neurochemical systems you know positive changes in brain structure and function what beautiful aspects are being brought forth in modern research and understanding so i wanted to share a few interesting research findings in recent times and right from 91 telis and deshi raju at nimhans started seeing how the application of kumbhak the holding phase of the pranayama can have different benefits short kumbhak increased in o2 consumption and metabolic rate long kumbhak lowering of o2 consumption so the same kumbhak whether it is short or long has differential benefits similarly work by chanof kalsa right nostril breathing how does it affect and how does left nostril breathing affect and they were amongst the first to demonstrate unique unilateral effect recent studies by raghuraj rajajay kumar and our own have again substantiated these findings telis in 1994 again right nostril increases oxygen consumption left nostril reducts reduction in sympathetic activity and this gave us the base for the therapeutic use in translational research the translational effect was hypertensives could be given left nostril breathing people who are depressed could be given right nostril breathing you can start to change the way the therapy is given a part breaking moment was the research by selva murthy sir in 1998 who they showed how the head down tilt and sarvangasana can change the whole pathway by changing the bare reflex sensitivity you reset your bare reflex mechanisms and the attenuation of sympathetic adrenal and renal angiotensin activity how the head below the heart bringing the head below the heart can start to be an effective tool to manage people who had hypertension again raghuraj looking at the most famous kapalbhati and nadi shuddhi the anulom vilom which is where everybody is running these days they looked at hrv and they found how kapalbhati is modifying autonomic status enhancing sympathetic and reducing vagal activity kavira judupa in 2003 how pranayama training produced subtle changes in left ventricular systolic performance by modulating cardiac autonomic tone another beautiful study by vijay lakshmi ma'am in 2004 the relaxation training helped the hypertensive but along with that what happened was the sympathetic function which was subnormal was also brought up to normal so there was a restoration of cardiovascular reflex mechanism we normally thinks oh yoga brings down the sympathetic pushes up the parasympathetic 
Well, if your sympathetic tone is down, the same relaxation can normalize it also. Because yoga is about samatvam, equanimity, homeostatic balance. And so autonomic balance is what yoga is producing. Later, RCTs by Punita and others have again confirmed these studies. Again, Madan Mohan says, studies on slow pranayama, fast pranayama. What beautiful studies came out in 2005. And that has been again confirmed by different RCTs, by Dinesh Tangavel and of course, my dear Sharmaji, who's chairing the session today. Slow and fast pranayama. And again, you start to realize the same pranayamas, different techniques, different effects. What beautiful methodologies are brought into practice. Again, the study on diabetes in yoga, everybody used to say, in, you do asana, you compress the pancreas, more insulin comes, diabetes is controlled. And Manjunatha in 2005, they showed, no, what is happening? There is increased sensitivity of the beta cells of pancreas to the glucose signal. So suddenly we realized it is not more insulin, but it is the breakdown of insulin resistance. And today we understand the mechanism of yoga on diabetes is to break down insulin resistance. That is the key that came from that study in 2005. A study in 2009 by Raghavendra Rao, who is today the director of CCRY in Ministry of Ayush, how yoga can help in the palliative care in terminal cases of cancer. Another beautiful place in palliative care where yoga can come in. And one of our studies on Surya Namaskar, the popular practice, what happens if you do it slowly? What happens if you do it fast? Well, if you do it slow, the effect is like yoga. You do it fast, it is like physical aerobic exercise. And suddenly you start to find answers to questions that then give you new questions to research further. One of the studies I love is Kalyani Beji. And this is the daughter of B and Ganga, sir at Nimhans. And they showed the Om chanting, the Om Japa, produced limbic deactivation by functional MRI studies. See, when your emotional volatility is high, your buddhi will not be there. We say, Vinashakala Vitarata Buddhi. When your emotions are volatile, your intellect suffers, your cortical control suffers. And how do you attenuate it? Lord, our great uh, Yogeshwar, Krishna, as well as Patanjali tell us, Klesha Tanukarana, how? Om Japa. And we find with functional MRI studies. What a beautiful tool, especially today. When we are in the midst of the COVID pandemic, we, our emotions are so volatile and we need to attenuate it. Om Chapa. Streeter, a beautiful uh, study that showed how yoga is working against chronic stress. Because what is happening? In stress, we find the parasympathetic going down, more sympathetic, under activity of GABA and an enhanced, increased allostatic load, that elephant on our shoulders. And what does yoga do? It enhances parasympathetic, reduces sympathetic, enhances the GABA function, and reduces allostatic load. Now we all know chronic stress, how does it produce disease? By allostatic load, and that can be reduced. And of course, this goes right down to our genes, Dean Ornish who has shown the reversal of heart disease through lifestyle. He has suggested and did a study in prostate cancer. And they found that the increased telomerase activity was found and an increase in relative telomere length after a five years follow-up. Normally in yoga studies, long-term follow-up is not there. They showed increased in relative telomere length. It is anti-aging. And this is where it is not just the epigenetic changes, but even maybe altering our genes can be happening through yoga. Now, with all of this good news, I just want to also give you some warnings. We have to be careful because so many yoga studies, they lack yoga in it. And the best example is the study that came out in 2009 on yoga and diabetes. And they said, oh, there was an insignificant fall in air, glycosylated hemoglobin, 
no change in other outcome measures. So it looks like yoga doesn't work. Okay, you go and analyze that study, and you know what they said? Two third of patients on the register were ineligible. So two third have gone out. Sixty six percent have gone out. Only thirty three percent you have. Of that, ninety percent of that declined to participate. So ninety percent of thirty three. So three percent. Of that, only fifty percent attendance in classes, and nobody did the exercises regularly at home. Now imagine you are giving an intervention. Nobody does it at home. Only fifty percent in attendance, and then on top of that, the icing on the cake. Most participants unsuitable for standard yoga practice. Now my question here is, as someone who is part of the yoga world and the medical world, there was no yoga in this study, and yet. this study is going to be quoted and cited again and again that yoga doesn't work why yoga doesn't work in the study there was no yoga in it so keep the yoga in yoga research the other warning make sure that the study was done in humans because what happened is recently there was a lot of hype lateral sleeping position influences the clean up of the veins metabolic waste products all neurological diseases and everybody started talking on social media yes i sleep on this side i sleep on that side i feel better you know what the study was done in rodent models um the, the funny part nobody looked at the original research people don't look at the original research they look at the newspaper headlines they look at the social media tweets and this is why we have to be very careful that please make sure the study was in humans please make sure yoga was in it so over the past decade we have looked at essential hypertensions we have looked at psychiatry we have looked at chronic kidney disease overnight sleep deprivation in young health professionals working a night shift with stress copd maternal fetal outcomes what happens when people have stress before an angiography how can yoga reduce the stress autism spectrum disorder diabetic lung and of course the all famous gramari pranayama humming and it works to reduce the snot scores in chronic rhinosinusitis and children who have autism their dental health hygiene is not good so we added yoga to the equation yoga with dentistry and suddenly there are changes and again study on depression where the anxiety levels were also harmonized by the addition of yoga again craving in participants of an alcohol de addiction program adjuvant yoga therapy in diabetes is nephroprotective how it helps in neurological function in inmates of a hospice reduction in autism severity and the recent one is on you know the biopsychosocial parameters before they go for a root canal treatment this is how we go forward this is how we take it interdisciplinary studies we have been working with the medical college we have been working with the dental college the nursing college allied health science and this is how it has to be multidisciplinary interdisciplinary now recently we did a analysis a swot analysis and you saw the original om team ananda udupa and madan mohan sir well today the new om team is ananda udupa and dr meena and what did we find in this we found the strengths of yoga the cultural heritage time tested lifestyle entity but the weakness low scientific vigor not well validated one cap fitting all heads there were difficulties in conducting blinded rct getting ethical approval funding and of course publishing in high impact journal who has the money for it and so we started to look at this what are the opportunities we can go into higher level and deeper studies with proper design we need multiple specialties and this is why it should not just be superficial we go we must go into in depth and so we need what is the way to go about this we need to plan with proper control group we should try double blind unbiased interpretation and we need to convince the reviewers of funding agencies and journals by high quality scientific work this is how we have to take it forward because there are compliance issues there are compliance issues and we must admit it questionable data collection analysis and interpretation people abroad are scared 
to publish research from our country because of people's unethical work in the past we have to show that we have ethical integrity and that we will do the studies of the best quality keeping the yoga in it the yoga in the yoga research so that it will be true yoga research before i end i would like to give a small message for too long we have been looking at an ego logical path of living on this planet where we human beings are the supreme masters of this planet we are the owners to do what we want with it we need to rechange that we need to go from a paradigm of ego logical to eco logical understand that we are part of the ecosystem this is the yogic perspective where we realize sarva bhuta all the living beings have the same atma madatma sarva bhuta atma we realize vasudeva kudumbakam yadu mure yavaram kele and that is how we grow in yoga as we grow in yoga and we start to look at it through a panoramic perspective the yoga research will also be enhanced qualitatively and quantitatively and for all of this to occur the highest attitude the highest quality of being human is gratitude when we have gratitude for the opportunity to be human the tamil moodati abbai says aridu aridu manida vai perthal aridu to be born human is such a boon to have an education is a greater boon to be a medical doctor to be a medical scientist to come to know about yoga and to have an opportunity to do research in yoga that art and science the cultural heritage of our country how blessed we are when we realize how blessed we are how fortunate we are in that sense of beautiful gratitude will come a sense of responsibility and when we have that responsibility we will do our best so that the world will start to understand the scientific modern understanding of this life transforming science called yoga i thank you on my behalf and on behalf of the center for yoga therapy education and research at shri balaji vidyapeet where for the past decade well it's going to be 11 years this year yoga therapy modern medicine have come together in a seamless integration the heart and the soul and the mind are working together more than two dozen research projects 130 plus papers well i cannot tell you the joy of this type of beautiful work because people think indian yoga association and indian medical association have to be antagonistic no 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 we can work together hand in hand hum honge kamya by holding hands yoga and modern medicine can come together and through that benefit humanity may that benefit reach each and every person on this planet and may we be the vehicle for that transformation to occur hari om tat sat dhanyavadah thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share with all of you thank you sir it was really wonderful to to be with you in in the on the pretext of chairing the session i will say like that because you know it is a, it is definitely you have given a beautiful complete summary of what the things are how things are actually happening in the present world you started with salutogenesis with how the pubmed research is going on from swami kuvala layananda to the yoga measures whatever are possible to its applications in the clinical practice and how it is being misused for the sales page for the personal benefits and techniques and then uh, it was beautiful to understand the importance of the yoga practice and it should be done by the yogis if it is possible so that it becomes more meaningful it is there is no body there is a soul also to these things then only we can understand physiological mechanisms then uh, very very importantly sir also talked about the pitfalls and challenges which are there in the yoga research which we all need to work together as a society as a humanity so that we can take this ancient tradition uh, in a very very scientific way to the present world and sir ended with the ego logical to the ecological which definitely will stay with me for life it is a wonderful way of putting up ego to ecological that is what we need to work for 
thank you sir it was really enlightening and there is no surprise that you have more than 300 papers with h index so high and thousands and thousands of citations so i would like to open it uh, for any questions uh, to the audience to the audience i would like to open if any question is there kindly put it up to sir right now otherwise you can put it in the chat or you can contact to him later it will be nice if he is there you can just try to okay. ask him to this question Okay. Is there any question? Let me just go to the chat box. Is there any question, Doctor Grishma? No, Can sir. You, uh, because with the no questions, you know, you always scared because it means either they understood everything or they understood nothing. So you know the. Uh, the oh, sir, we have already got the very beautiful feedback. I started following on the chat box, which talks about that. You know, it was fascinating, excellent. And sir, there are questions. I mean, the first question. Yeah. Uh, uh, do I read it out, sir, or will you take it up? Sir, this is a question from Dr. Amol Dongwe, yes. uh, which says the systematic review says no evidence for yoga. What uh, is your I opinion? I disagree with that statement. there are huge amount of cocaine reviews showing evidence for yoga even the uh, uh, american institutions have started to accept it uk institutions have started to accept it i think if you look at 6205 papers i showed you on pubmed journals and so many meta analysis coming out today holger kramer in germany has done more than two dozen meta analysis showing the effects of yoga so just google holger kramer meta analysis yoga he has done it on nearly all conditions now we are not saying yoga will cure it all i think the thing is that only yoga will cure every disease a to z that is an unscientific unsubstantiated statement but what we can say is yoga definitely has a role to play in all psychosomatic stress induced disorders because yoga is the best vaccine and antidote to stress so if you don't have stress yoga is the vaccine if you have stress yoga is the antidote and the anti stress effect of yoga has been documented so many times the second thing yoga is definitely documented is perceived stress scales every study that has used perceived stress scale has shown the perception of stress goes down it is absolutely happening so meta analysis are showing it so i suggest you go and look at all the meta analysis holger kramer has done a huge amount conditions respiratory conditions cardiac conditions musculoskeletal yoga is as effective as normal uh, treatment for back pain now people say oh yoga is only as effective as effective means the standard management yoga is as effective that is an amazing finding and what we stress is adjuvant yoga therapy so if a diabetic patient is receiving medical management for diabetes add the yoga to it it is add on and every study we have done has shown that normally the disease will be progressing be it diabetes hypertension uh, alzheimers any condition despite medical management is constantly progressing and there is degeneration you add yoga into it you can halt the degeneration so the disease progression can be halted by adding yoga and the moment you do you continue the medical management don't stop it this whole idea that i'm doing yoga so i will not take medicine that is downright unscientific yoga plus modern medicine yoga plus ayurveda yoga plus homeopathy because yoga is non pharmacological it is safe cost effective the safety studies on yoga have shown amazing results amazing results so if you don't like the word safe you call it relatively safe relatively safe cost effective and non pharmacological and the key aspect that we always highlight is relaxation what are the pathways the pathways are basically by changing your perception because 
the whole stress response i don't like the word response you are all physiologists i don't like the word response i call it stress reaction because response means you have a choice in it in stress once it comes in there's no choice it is an avalanche a cascade so where is the choice the choice is how i perceive the stressor so how i perceive the stressor if i don't perceive it as stress the stress response doesn't happen if i perceive it as stress the whole stress response happens and that is where yoga comes in because yoga enables you to move from the brain stem dominant survival mode to the prefrontal cortex living mode this is survival mode i have to survive the brain stem the prefrontal cortex says i want to live not just survive and what do we do the key is pranayama normal unconscious autonomic respiration is brain stem we all know that here what are you doing in pranayama you are shifting the control from here to here from the back of the head to the front of the head and suddenly you are deciding how long you want to breathe how short you want to breathe which nostril you want to breathe how long you want to hold the breath you have regained cortical control over your respiratory apparatus and this is transformative because survival mode is stress mode we call it abhinivesha klesha oh my god will i die will i get covid will my family get covid will i lose my job will i get my insurance what if i have an accident it's all survival mode up here it says i cannot change the fact that covid is there in the planet what can i do about it i can follow covid appropriate behavior what can i do i can change the way i perceive it the moment you change the way you perceive it your stress level goes down your immune function comes up because what does stress do attenuates the immune function automatically you de-stress with yoga and dr selvamurthy who retired as controller of drdo today chancellor of amiti university you know what he said yoga is triple action he says it it helps you change your perception of the stressor it helps to modulate your stress response and then it helps you to relieve the stress change your perception attenuate modulate your stress response and the third one release the pent up stress three in one action so i hope this answers a few of those questions i could go on for five hours on this topic but i don't want to make all of you late because uh, seriously i'll tell you this is such an opportunity to reach out to all of you and i thank the enopaya university for this opportunity i thank my mentor madan mohan sir who was supposed to give this talk and because of his health issue i got this chance to present on his behalf i am forever grateful to him for giving me the scientific bent to look at the science of yoga and i thank all of you for this wonderful opportunity thank you dr ananda for a wonderful explanation as well there are a few questions but i think that uh, they can be taken up uh, on the personal they are like they are asking for the physiological mechanisms perhaps uh, we can interact on that later over to krishna and thank you very much hpa axis limbic attenuation limbic attenuation hpa axis that is the key to everything uh, thank you dr vivek kumar sharma sir uh, for sharing the session thank and uh, thank you uh, yogacharya dr ananda balayogi sir for giving such an excellent talk and enlightening us uh, on yoga thank you very much sir it's a pleasure